Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Bill, the web series and podcast where we talk to opinion makers and policymakers on what is happening behind the legislation that is driving changes in Sacramento. Today I'm excited about our guest, um, a very popular person in town, <laughs> well known, famous and infamous, I suppose would probably be the best way to put it, a physician, one of just a couple in Sacramento who's actually making public health legislation and yeah. taking care of us as a state, if you will. The man who put pan in pandemic, <laughs> Senator Richard Pan. Senator, thank thanks you. for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Now, Amy is my co-host, Amy Brown. You yes. know Amy. And Amy yes. called. She's running a little bit late. Oh, okay. I know that you've got a tight schedule, so she'll yes. be joining us in just a few All minutes. Right. No surprise, we wanted to talk to you today about your expertise in the area of vaccinations. Ah, You've developed the you. name not just here in California, but nationally. Mm -hmm. And we want to talk about the legislation that you're working on now. Sure. But just sort of generally, mm -hmm. um, vaccinations are not new to you. You're a pediatrician right. who for some reason decided to run for elected office. Right. And it's given you a real platform to um, kind of lead and be looked to as somebody who has a scientist's background and a genuine understanding of what the importance of vaccinations are at this critical time in our state and country's history. Oh, Fair enough? You. Yes, thank so, you. So talk to us a little bit about what SB 276 is, what it does, and what you're trying to do with that legislation. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, let me just start by saying that as a pediatrician, actually, uh, I came to uh, UC Davis in Sacramento and then ran for the legislature because I knew there were many things we needed to do for children. But I didn't realize initially that one of the most fundamental things we can do, one of the most cost effective, one of the most important things we could do for kids, which is vaccinate kids, was something that we had to go and take care of. That's something that had been settled in science, you know, history has proven that we've been able to even eliminate uh, diseases like smallpox and we've eliminated measles from the United States, that we had to go polio. back and, and polio, <laughs> right, we had to go back and yeah. take care of that. Right. So. Uh, it's a little retro, but uh, it's not like you were tra you ran on a vaccine plan. No, I was not planning to run and do <laughs> vaccination bills because I thought people were smart enough to know they should vaccinate their kids. It's like running on indoor plumbing. Is there something that's already there? Right. right? You sort of assume that that's <laughs> taken care of, yeah. but you know. Um, Sorry, I'm like... you, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't look so well. I, I don't. Amy. I don't really feel well. So, I, I can I? Did, I is this okay? I don't want to. So, I'm sorry I'm late, I'm not feeling well, but I didn't want to miss speaking to the good senator, Dr. Richard Pan, but I will tell you that I was in the Capitol when this bill was being heard in health, and ever since then, I, I have a little bit of a rash. If we, afterwards, if you could just take a look at it for me. Okay, well, what does that look like, doctor? <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like uh, this fellow's cousins has gotten to you. <laughs> oh my gosh, is this a, a measle weeble? Oh jeez. Okay, carry on. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry I'm late. What, is this whole dynamic of the anti-vaccine effort a new phenomenon, or is it something that's been around as long as you've been practicing medicine? Well, certainly there's always been an anti-vaccine movement going all the way back to Edward Jenner when people claimed that you turned into a cow if you got vaccinated, which, of course, is totally untrue. No one making uh, that argument now? No, no one making that right. argument now. Well, you know, we actually we eradicated smallpox, so we took care of that okay. thanks to vaccines. So, by the way, if you really want to eliminate a vaccine, get everyone vaccinated, the disease goes away, and then no one needs the vaccine anymore. So, there you go. <laughs> so, your bill moved out of committee. 276, which basically is a way to close loopholes of physicians, and there's just a there's just you know a couple hundred, it's a small number. Yeah, and I'm not even sure it's a couple hundred. Maybe so, less than that. Yeah, maybe who are actually selling kind of access to the yes. uh, medical exemptions. Right. Right. It's loophole, unintended consequence, but kind of makes yeah. sense, right? Well, so what happened is we yeah. said we finally said, okay, look, we you know measles outbreak, Disneyland. You don't go to Disneyland to get measles, right? right? So yeah. measles. And, and, and so, and it spreads across the state and across the country. And so the people of California said, we had enough, right? Th th this is going too far. Uh, uh, and uh, so we eliminated all non-medical exemptions. So that left medical exemptions, which means that if you have a medical reason not to get vaccinated, it's not safe for you to get vaccinated, then of course we won't require you to get vaccinated. 
But then, unfortunately, a handful of physicians said, hey, there's a marketing opportunity, right? So we've seen this before. Like, you know, when we had medical marijuana, people right. would then, some doctors would say, I'll just write, you know, send me a note over email. I'll write you a prescription. Or uh, fortunately, I don't think anyone's hawking uh, handicap placards because a doctor yes. has to certify disability, right? Yeah. So unfortunately, there's sometimes a small number of doctors who decide that entrepreneurship uh, in that way is more important than their professional responsibility, to be honest. So from from 2015 until this uh, session, yes. you had seen this uptick right. in these doctors just writing right. prescriptions. And uh, were they selling these things online? I mean, how, well, how, how did you discover uh, that you needed to follow up with SB sure. 276 and put those constraints sure. in place? So certainly, first of all, we've, uh, we do know that there are physicians who would post online on social media that uh, they would be offering medical exemptions. Uh, they often provided guidance to people about how they could get them. Uh, and uh, we also know that uh, some, some public health officers uh, ask schools to provide them uh, copies of the medical exemption. So the public health officer wouldn't know who received them, but they would know which physicians were writing them. And not this only happened in a few counties. Interesting enough, the uh, anti-vaxxers sued one of the public health officers who did that. They didn't want them to know and look into it. Uh, uh, but, there's, but there was actually some researchers who did a survey of public health officers and basically they said yes we know they're out there we know there's a lot of fake medical exemptions going on uh, for inappropriate reasons school nurses have reported this as well but by the way the school has no power to reject uh, a medical exemption for you know no matter what the reason the medical exemption is written for so as long as there's a you know california licensed physician who signed it they basically have to accept it, even they know that's inappropriate and that other children are at risk at school. So, so you know, uh, 276 will help the medical board do these investigations. 276 will also uh, help uh, be sure that uh, uh, what people are, when uh, basically people getting inappropriate medical exemptions, that the Department of Public Health, which is charged with protecting us against diseases like measles, uh, can do their job. So every good conspiracy theory needs a villain. Oh yes, and I, I mean, I don't, I don't mean to be offensive, but <laughs> you don't make a good villain. Uh, you're a Harvard-educated so, pediatrician, never really focused on this issue until there were outbreaks. What's with what's with the animus out there? Because I know that you have become a target yes. in some really frightening ways. Well, it's interesting because when they had their big rally before they all marched in to, to protest, you know, to, to oppose 276, the only thing on stage with the speakers was a picture of my face with what appeared to be blood splattered yeah. on it. I mean, it wasn't like they had a big banner said, you know, no on 276 or their, you know, they, or their various slogans they have. Uh, and many of them, they, by the way, someone's also hawking T-shirts with that image. So they're going mm -hmm. around. They actually wore T-shirts into the hearing room. Yeah. And uh, that's a threat. Yeah, no, it's a threat. Yeah, it's a threat. Uh, and again, like, right. like other good conspiracy theories, yes. this seems to transcend the spectrum from right to left, right? You've got these clusters in Marin County, but then mm -hmm. you also have them in the far north part of the state, which is kind of Trump country. And it just seems like it's not ideological, but it kind of is. Well, well, and their arguments against the bill are drastically different. different right? like that this, make no sense. It's like a right? coalition that otherwise would hate each other has found this common well, threat, this common well, enemy. Well, and be well, like, Let's well it's interesting because I, I've seen some, you know, politicians who there's a small number of politicians who are anti-vaccine who who have you know, who generally have claimed you know strong conservative potential you know credentials who are essentially following the hollywood elite like robert de niro and right. jim carrey is like right. oh well you know what we listen to them and we're listening to them and we're putting forward their 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 myths and so forth their conspiracy theories is our own so like so i guess the hollywood elite has taken over the far right you know, okay. something's yeah. happened. It's just yeah. the strangest there you thing I've ever seen. Yeah. So I guess is that is that a lack of independent thinking by those politics by, by the far right there, or is it the uh, following the far left's lead? Yeah. So talk about the, the bricks, the story behind the bricks, oh. and and what the uh, the sort of reaction has been in the legislature. Well, I mean, 
Uh, are they sh- sending these to certain members who are voting for for so, your bill? Well, they were. I think they were sending them to assembly members who were on the health committee, at least. I don't know if they sent to other assembly members. And uh, well, generally, when you send someone a brick, you're threatening them, right? Threat. Yeah, it's a threat. You're yeah. basically, and, and it's 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 really sad that basically, I guess, without science and facts on your side, I guess you're resorting to threats, right? You you make threats. You know, you send bricks. You you put pictures of people's faces with blood splat. You know, it looks like their blood splattered face. You threaten. You know, you you hold. You have beams with guns saying that you know, take your best shot. I get to shoot first or something. Uh, you. Uh, you, you you go to hearings and you shout you shout things from the hearing room right well, we're, we're going to get you we have you know revolution's going to come etc and 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 I I mean I think uh, well they they can figure out what kind of pressure they're making right so if you had to forcibly vaccinate a celebrity we would yeah. never forcibly vaccinate anyone look at me here and you got a choice between Jessica Bill and Sarah Palin who would it be. <laughs> Don't answer yeah. that. You know what? Question. I, ironically, <laughs> I bet you both of them were already vaccinated by their parents. Oh, right. Right? They, they just did so they just didn't listen to their own parents. Maybe. Yeah. So. Yeah. so I heard that the way we actually as a species got rid of the black plague was through a daily regimen of yoga and Pilates and a gluten free diet. Is that true? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you one thing. We didn't need vaccines. Well, let's, let's, then, well, let's, let's, let's put it this way. There was certainly in those medieval villages, no yeah. processed food, uh, plenty. Uh, let's put it this way. We could talk about how much fresh air there was in the hut when you have all your animals living with you. But, you know, you didn't have, you know, factory pollutants, plastics and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, entire villages and, you know, a third of the population was wiped out. So uh, it's but you know what? But uh I think they certainly they, they didn't have processed food and no, no no sugar added beverages. Who's got a better medical record, Doctor Sears or Doctor Seuss? <laughs> okay. <laughs> too much? <laughs> too far? Oh, I took it too far, Miss Measles. <laughs> well, there's certainly you don't need to answer that. There, there's, there's more truth in the Lorax than there the is Lorax. in Doctor Sears's vaccine book, which he, by the way, he admitted has no evidence behind it. So I prefer to read the Lorax. Yeah. And he's still selling the book. He's still allowed to. I mean, you can. He's still sell selling the book. By the way, he should. By the way, you know, Jerry Hill had that bill. He should have to be required to put a stamp on the top of every one of those books saying, "I've been put on probation by the medical board." Yeah. And probably sell more books. Yeah. With that, with that crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. How you feeling? A little shaky. A little but, shaky. Uh, yeah. So you know, I I know I uh, we want to get um, Dr. Pan back to the Capitol to do good work for the state of California. But you were gonna. Maybe ask him about some of the memes, like maybe what is, th- what's the most offensive and what's maybe his favorite that tickled him a little bit. Again, part of this troubling dynamic, and you mentioned yes. it earlier, is the internet right. allows the spread of not just good information, but bad information. Right. Art. And it allows these movements to kind of come together right. based on very, very flimsy or frankly just conspiracy yes. theory related data. Um, you have become the target of, some were kind of funny, is that fair to say? It's not me, so I'm just going to say that, right? What um, Can you talk about some of the imagery that's out there, or do you want to talk about some of it? I mean, it ranges from, like, putting you on the cover of Time magazine to... Well, Time did call me a hero. Oh, it so did? It, yes. Time right. magazine wrote an article called me uh, a hero. So Maybe uh, man for, of the year possibility, for, you think? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Hey, you know what? Maybe if they can ramp it up a little more, I'll get man of the year. For me, they were offensive and hurtful and you know I, I i have some empathy and so i was just thinking about you know dr pan you yeah. have kids and yes. and a wife and yes. you know if i i don't want to put words in your mouth but I, you know these are threats and i would yes. feel very uncomfortable and nervous yes. about um how far these yeah. people are, are going with yeah. regard to your family well I, I think it's very unfortunate that in many ways first of all you know what they're trying to do is of course to see what they can whether they can intimidate me and yeah. they've very proven they cannot but now what they're trying to do is to try to use me an example uh, and point to me uh, when other uh, elected officials want to do something. And they say, yeah. see what we're doing to Pan and see what we're 
how what we're doing to him and do you want that being done to you and your family and as a way to threaten them to try to get people to back down from doing uh, legislation or supporting legislation that's going to protect kids. So they're going to say, look, we're going to harass you, we're going to threaten your family, and is this something you want to put up with? Look what we're doing to him. And I think that's truly unfortunate. This is not the way we should be making public policy. Right. This is, and, and the idea that you can, should be th threatening, um, uh, you know, elected officials as a way to you know, get your uh, point across uh, that's something that should be rejected across the board, no matter which party you're in, what's your ideology. Uh, that is not the appropriate way to, uh, to do things. It's a really fascinating story in how um, a very, 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 very small minority of people who are extraordinarily loud and aggressive can, um, and I don't think they're moving, well, well, they're, they're, they're not moving votes here, by the way. They're scaring people, and they are, I think, maybe backing some well, people off. Go ahead. So, 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 so I think the, the, the uh, first of all, uh, there's always been people who've been willing to express extreme uh, views and also uh, even take extreme action. What we don't need to do is give them a platform. And right. unfortunately, that's what the Internet and social media has done. I think that's something social media companies need to... Uh, take some responsibility for. Yeah. People, of course, can express a variety of views, and I'm a strong supporter of the First Amendment. If someone wants to go and, and say whatever they want to say, but we are also not obligated to give them a platform right. for false information, for lies that will harm the public. We don't have to give them a platform. And that's really what's changed, is that social media and the internet has given them a platform. So the way search engines work, the way social media works, which actually tends to pull things from the extreme. And that's the opportunity for manipulation that we need to deal with. Mm -hmm. So whether we talk about vaccines or other types of issues. And uh, so, you know, I'm saying that there's always been people who yeah. don't like vaccines, who oppose vaccines, uh, but newspapers didn't give them front page articles all the time when they did fact checks. Although we did deal with some challenges at the beginning around what we call false equivalents. Mm -hmm. I think now journalists are recognizing that uh, they need to fact check things before they put things out, publish them in their papers. Give them and, a megaphone. And give them a megaphone. So yeah. it's really the megaphone that's the biggest problem, right, that we're having. So we have these closed Facebook book groups where essentially they operate like virtual cults. Uh, we need to open them up right and uh, so that people can actually get accurate information uh, we need to be sure that uh, uh, we don't allow f false information to be propagated uh, if it's been debunked right? well and to, to me put a little finer point on this too as a, yep. as a political consultant mm -hmm. we're obviously looking to kind of mm -hmm. quantify mathematically mm -hmm. how many people are involved with this and that effort right. if you just take some basic math and say let's say 95 percent 94 percent of families and children are vaccinating, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's essentially the numbers, give or take a point or two, and there's obviously some variance. It's, the, it's around the 90th percentage. It's 90 percent. Right. So let's say those 10 percent that are not are extremely, you know, committed. And I don't think it's even that. No, no. That, that yeah, too, yeah, it's, but let's just let's be generous and say it's 10 percent. Half of them are kind of from the crazy left. Half of them are from the crazy right. You're talking about really, really small numbers that are not going to have any electoral impact on any of the races in this state at the assembly, senate, or even city council level. Right. I mean, these people are not, one, they're not moving public opinion. They're certainly no. not making friends and influencing yes. people. And they just don't have the raw numbers to actually affect the outcomes of races. Why are we giving them, one, yeah. the megaphone, to your point, but two, perhaps most importantly, do you think that there's getting any traction in the legislature or are they their own worst enemy? So the unfortunate part is, is that there are uh, politicians who uh, are afraid of them. And uh, so they've, electorally, they've not been very successful. Right. Uh, but there are politicians who are afraid uh, that because they're loud and noisy and particularly dedicated to their cause, that even though they're a very small minority, 10% would be extremely generous. I think we're talking right. a couple percent. Agreed. That... Um, that basically that's their one issue. That's the only issue they care about. And so that 1% becomes a bit magnified when you think about the fact that the vast majority of everyone else, while they support vaccines, may actually have other issues that they view as more important because... Like every other issue. Like, but, but the thing is, that only is because if there aren't outbreaks, people can feel that way. 
And I remind people is that as we have, if we have increasing numbers of outbreaks, people who assume that vaccines have taken care of everything are going to turn on them. And in fact, I think you see a little bit of it now, right? So with uh, the measles outbreak, that the biggest one in over a quarter century, right, here in the United States going on this year, that what you saw see is, is that the reaction around 276 and the people who oppose vaccines is a bit, little bit different than even 277, where we, again, had a large measles outbreak in California, but not so, you know, it spread across the country, but it wasn't quite as large. And I think people are, are losing patience with the anti-vaxxers. Before, it's kind of like, you know what? You want to believe that. It's a fringe belief, but it's not really affecting me. We're not seeing outbreaks. You know, my kids are vaccinated. No big deal. There's always people out there, right? I think people are feeling that. Now they're like, well, wait a minute. We have these outbreaks going on. They're spreading. They're affecting places I go to, where my family goes to. Right. And even though we're vaccinated, um, you know, I know I have a cousin who has an infant, right? I, you know, my grandmother is being treated for cancer. And people are realizing, wait a minute, these anti-vaxxers are putting my family at risk. And now that makes this issue much more important to me, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I sort of assumed I didn't have to worry about it. Now I have to, now I'm thinking about maybe I actually do need to worry about it. I am worried about it. And that's, I think, changing some of the tone. And I always say that in the end, in the end, the anti-vaccine movement will fail uh, in terms of, there'll always be anti-vaxxers, but in terms of being able to grow in size, because at a certain point, the population will turn against them when yeah. outbreaks happen. The only question is, is that how many people have to be hospitalized and die before so that, that tipping point, point happens? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that's the unfortunate part. We know what will happen. We just, the question is, is that how many people will have to get sick and die before finally the public says, we had enough, stop this, and we, we do not want our own families to suffer. I don't want our friends and neighbors to suffer. We've had enough of this. The kooky <laughs> The kookiness isn't cute anymore. <coughs> I'm yes. certainly worried about Speaking it. Of it. <laughs> On that note, Senator Pan, anything else you want to add for the discussion? Well, I, we need to keep uh, our community safe, our kids safe. That's why I did these bills. I Actually, I would like to say is that if we stop having outbreaks, I'll stop doing these bills. Fair enough. Yeah. There we go. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate Thank you. it. Thanks Thank for coming. Thank you. Pleasure. Yeah. Please stop. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs>